Today on Monkey Life. Big news for the park and for one of the established chimp groups in particular. There are two new big intimidating arrivals heading this way and our initial plan anyway is to shake it up a bit in Brian's group. Franco's capuchins demonstrate the size of the task doesn't outweigh their ability to solve it. I don't think you realise exactly how strong they are until you see them doing something like that. And recently rescued marmoset Jangles summons up the courage to join her new mate Reggie in the outside enclosure. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. Hi! Look at that. Oh, he's fantastic. The park provides a home for more than 260 primates from 25 different species. The park has four communities of chimpanzees, with Brian's group of five being the smallest. But their number is about to increase. I don't know what they're going to think, but there are two new big intimidating arrivals heading this way, and our initial plan anyway is to shake it up a bit in Brian's group. The two new chimps currently live in Argentina at the former Buenos Aires Zoo which has undergone a radical transformation. It no longer exhibits animals from around the globe, having become an eco-park to preserve and protect Argentinian wildlife, leaving just a few non-native exotic species, including two chimpanzees. Their names are Sasha and Kangu, um, and their story is a little bit of a unique and odd one. Sasha and Kangu were both born at the zoo, and share the same father. Female Sasha is 25, 10 years older than her brother. But that's not the only relationship they share. The way the former zoo was managed, birth control wasn't kept in check and they didn't really plan ahead. So actually Sasha is also Kangu's mother. So um, they're both brother and sister and mother and son, which isn't ideal, but the fact that um, Kangu was um, the product of a family relation. It isn't good, but for him, it makes no difference. He's a perfectly healthy, quite frankly, ripped and intimidating looking young man. It's taken more than a year to arrange the move, with numerous online meetings with zoo and government officials. We have transported 77 chimpanzees from 15 different countries. But finally, Alison has been given the green light and will soon be flying to Buenos Aires along with Jeremy to bring the two chimps back to Dorset. In the meantime, they've been getting to know the chimps via videos sent by helpful keepers in Argentina. They both appear really relaxed and pleasant, but there is only the two of them and they were born in that location and have never gone anywhere else, nor have they ever met any unfamiliar chimps. And the five chimps they'll be meeting at the park are a bit of an unusual bunch, although they do get on well together. Brian's group are in actually a pretty good place right now. He's, you know, not the most stable of leaders. He's got personal issues. His traumatic background you know, he's never really going to get over. But at the same time, that seems to be settling down as he evolves into the role of leader of this group of chimpanzees, which is quite a unique group. I mean, we've got an amputee, Lulu, who's sort of the old wise woman of the group, really. She's been here for so long, but she's always been quite a self-contained individual. So she definitely has authority and opinions in the groups, but usually she's off on her own. 
Ash is just the Incredible Hulk, probably one of our biggest chimpanzees in the park. But actually underneath that, there's a very silly young lady. And um, Nari, of course, we all just love to bits. And Rodders, what to do with a problem like Rodders, you know? He's just a boisterous young teenage lad, really, um, and full of mischief. So that's the ragtag mob in there, but actually, they sort of all have each other's backs. They're quite a tight-knit group, and it's really lovely to see. The foundation of the group was the park's chimpanzee nursery, led for years by amazing foster mum Sally with the support of Lulu. Sally successfully brought up Brian, Ash and Rodders from tiny infants to adulthood. It's going to be quite daunting for this established troupe and for the new Argentinian arrivals. Their background and experiences of life are very limited compared to what's happened with all of our guys here in Brian's group. The question is, what are these guys gonna make of them? A lot's gonna depend on the characters, those unique personal characters of those two chimpanzees. It's been a few days since Alison rescued a female marmoset called Jangles from a home in West Yorkshire. The small primate had a nervy start to life at the park, but now she's starting to blossom. Jangles has really changed since she arrived. When she first came in, she was really, really shy. Uh, she was hiding away in a blanket, staying in the nest box. Uh, we would know that she would be going around the enclosure because the food would have been eaten, but as soon as anyone entered the house, uh, she would be hidden away. Um, so over the last couple of days, she's really come out of her shell. Um, and yeah, she's doing really well. Jangles had lived in a family group in the past, but had been living alone for some time. She was in desperate need of a companion, so the team have introduced her to Reggie, who recently lost his partner. They've really hit it off, so uh, Reggie's been going over her, to her, approaching her. Uh, they've had a few little grooming sessions, uh, so it's really, really helped in her rehabilitation by putting her back with another marmoset. Today, it's the next step in Jangles' rehabilitation. Basically, we want to give them the outside access. We want to give them extra space to explore and to go outside. It's a bit overcast at the moment, but we are having some sunny spells. Now it's coming into spring, um, so hopefully they can enjoy each other's company outside as well. Reggie, Jangles! Reggie is first to pop his head out. A quick check that the coast is clear, and he heads outside. With a little vocal encouragement from Sean, Jangles soon appears. Good boy, Reg. Hi, Jangles. Oh, that's a good girl. Oh, well done. She's a little wary and nervous at first. The large outside enclosure, with all its branching and natural foliage, is vastly different from what she's used to. But Reggie is being a perfect housemate. Oh, contact calls. Giving her plenty of encouragement. And soon, Jangles is exploring. Taking in all the different sights, smells and noises. She's doing really well. So Reggie came out first and then she followed quite quickly. She's going in and outside of the house, so she's using the cat flaps really well. And she is just going back and forth, just making sure she's looking at her surroundings. Um, but yeah, she seems to be really enjoying it at the moment, which is great. Jangles appears happy and content in her new home. She's going to need to increase her strength and coordination to get around all the branching, but she has plenty of time for that. And when she's had enough, she can always cuddle up to Reggie back indoors. The primate care teams at the park love to challenge their charges and encourage natural behavior. Today, it's the turn of the youngest and probably most energetic group of capuchins, led by Franco. 
We're basically hanging whole foods up for them. So we've got melons and pineapples. It's a bit of a treat. They don't always get um, fruit presented like this. They don't always get whole things. So yeah, it's going to be quite exciting. And we're hanging it up all over the enclosure. So getting it up as high as possible, getting the harness on, ladders up, and yeah, just hanging it up on the highest points that we can. The fruit may be high in sugar, but by stringing it up in hard to reach places. So we'll just need to get it over first so that I can actually knot it. The team are counting on the capuchins expending a lot of energy and calories getting to the fruit and breaking it open before they even eat it. I mean, capuchins are really destructive animals, really. They're really destructive foragers. So, yeah, they'll have no problem with this. Um, they're quite well known for bashing things around on rocks and using tools to smash things open. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think we'll have much problem. Time to see if Katie is right. All right, we ready? The two old ladies of this predominantly young group are let out first. Lucy and Mary were born in the wild before being caught for use in a laboratory. They used to be the dominant females, but have now surrendered the position to the more feisty, younger girls. Early access allows them an opportunity to get their share of the food before the more dominant individuals take over. The rest of the troop can't wait to get started. Leader Franco considers the tightrope, but it's not for him. Frida demonstrates great balance. The clever female works out how to untie the rope securing a watermelon. It's too heavy for her to catch, and she's going to have to move quickly before someone else tucks in. Felipe, Franco's second in command, adopts a Mission Impossible style and uses his tail as a counterbalance. It's an amazing display of agility on such a thin piece of rope. Emily makes short work of a pineapple, her sharp teeth tearing out chunks. While Digit forages for leftovers, William uses his razor-sharp teeth to gnaw through the tough outer skin of a melon. Fabian, one of the youngest of the group, tackles a whole watermelon with strength and determination, successfully splitting it in two. They're amazingly strong. I don't think you realise exactly how strong they are until you see them doing something like that and carrying a big melon. For their size, yeah, they're massively strong, but you can definitely see it is a little bit awkward for them. Quite often they have to go on two legs, which obviously isn't their natural way of walking entirely, but they seem to manage all right, and it's definitely enriching for them. Today's challenge is having the desired effect, stretching the capuchin's capabilities and keeping them engaged. Agile Emily sets the standard. It's really nice to do this because it's presenting them their food in a slightly different way and it is encouraging them to kind of process it. They have to think about what they're doing. And yeah, it is quite a difficult thing to get into a melon or a bit of pineapple and especially negotiate these bits of rope that we've got. So it's really nice to see them doing all these behaviours. And that's the kind of thing they probably spend most of their day doing. So it is really natural behaviour to see. With the warmer weather, the capuchins have 24 hour access to their enclosure and can come and go as they please, giving them plenty of time to enjoy the fruits of their labour. At Bart's large outside enclosure, the group are busy tucking into breakfast. But catering for the dietary needs of this troop isn't straightforward. For the past five years, the primate care team have been managing the food intake of leader Bart, who suffers from type 1 diabetes. Initially, it was touch and go whether the well-liked chimp would survive. But thanks to the hard work and dedication of the staff, he pulled through and is now a fit and strong alpha male. However, his blood glucose levels still need to be regularly checked. What's this, big man? Come in here, then. Come on, then. 
A few months ago, the team had a scare when Bart's readings were abnormally low. So now we do try, like we tweaked our carbohydrate allowance and his insulin allowance, just to try and keep him that little bit higher so that if we do start seeing a fairly big drop, we've got more time to act to boost him back up again because we just don't want to risk him just dropping that low. And if it happens, say, out in the enclosure, when we then had to battle to get all the other chimps in away from him and then get in there and try and save him, in the time we achieved all that, we probably would have lost him. So we really want to keep him just on top of everything there. You coming, big man? You can push past Beth. You're the dominant male. Thank you. <laughs> Put. Thank you. The daily routine is now a natural way of life for the chimp. Where are we at? 11.7. Good boy. Bart is an exceptional patient, but the problem for Sean and the team is understanding what a normal reading for a chimp should be. Initially, they based the results on humans with type 1 diabetes. But recently, they started to look at some of the park's other chimps for comparison. Hand. Good girl. You're very good with that, aren't you? So we started testing Toprish, Brian and Eddie, just to give us a better idea of what's more normal for one of our guys' blood glucose to be. So all of our initial assumptions about Bart was that we would manage him same as a human, like we'd try and keep him within that ideal human range. But then we just wondered, oh, well, what actually is more of a normal chimp range for these guys? So we went with Toprish because they're a comparable age and in the same group and on the same diet. Eddie, obviously, is a blood relative, so we wanted to see what she's like. And Brian, again, another big male, similar age, but over in a different group. So just that we could compare them to what we were seeing with Bart. Where are we at? Four. A lot lower than Bart. Bart and Toprish get on really well. The young chimp is one of his favourite ladies. She's also a quick learner. Toprish is a superstar with it. She really... Because she's quite young, she's a bit of a sponge and, like I said, she wants to get involved with everything and to the point where if we test Bart and we don't test Toprish, she has a tantrum. She really, really likes to be tested. Eddie is a completely different, different kettle of fish. Eddie did not like to be tested at all. We had to really, really make sure the rewards were nice and high value for her to cooperate with us. Are you trying to squeeze a drop of your own blood out? The training has now progressed to another level. Should we try this then? Sean has started to teach some of the male chimps to participate while he takes an ECG reading using a portable monitor. Touch. Oh, oh, oh. Captive chimps, the major cause of death for them is heart issues. Uh, and obviously we've had like physically perfect males like Ben and Tico that we have lost to heart problems in the past. And we wouldn't have had a single clue because physically they looked perfect. So this little ECG reader allows us to get a little idea of what's going on with the heartbeat. We can de detect arrhythmias or irregular heartbeats. And then that would then lead us on to take further investigation. It's still in the early days of shaping it at the moment. Touch. Bart's not quite got it yet. <laughs> yeah, your hand lives there. Bart, touch. Touch. There we go. The results are recorded on a phone app. Good job, Bart. Nice one, big man. Want some of that? Luckily, that reading, even though it was quite a short one, was pretty perfect heartbeat, so I'm quite happy with him. There you go, big man. You're free to go. The whole process needs to be repeated regularly, but for today, the tests and checks are complete. Bart and Toprish are free to head back out and enjoy the large enclosure with the rest of the troop. One of the park's small primate groups is in for a bit of a challenge today. Mealtime is being served up in a very different way. So today we've got some enrichment for our squirrel monkey group. Uh, we've just got some coconut shells on some string, so you can see they're all sat in together. What we're going to do is put some straw in between and then put some insects in. So a very important part of their diet, good source of protein they get multiple insect feeds a day, but this way we're going to make them work for it a little bit more. So we're going to have to lift up the coconuts and then forage for it. So 
exhibiting some natural behaviours. All four squirrel monkeys in the group enjoy a challenge. In general, squirrel monkeys will be interested in anything you put in, so they're very inquisitive animals. You can put something in which isn't very exciting, but if it's new, they'll come and look at it. This group especially, they love uh, any, anything we put in, really. They'll go and investigate. So, yeah, uh, hopefully they will uh, come out to these straight away. And right on cue, the squirrel monkeys head out to investigate. The group is made up of three common squirrel monkeys, Lucille, Logan and Lopez, and one black-capped female Nueve. They share a love of foraging for bugs and insects. It doesn't take them long to work out there's plenty hidden in the coconut shells. They're soon pulling out the straw, hunting for the mealworms. Their small, nimble hands are perfect for rummaging through the shells. The foursome have differing techniques, but all have amazing balance and agility. Clever Lopez demonstrates his skills and ingenuity, balancing on a tower of coconuts while reaching up and foraging through another. This group contains a real mix of characters. The girls are a little bit more lively, the boys uh, sometimes are a little bit quieter. Logan likes to spend quite a bit of time out at the front, sort of sunbathing. In the nice weather, uh, Nueve, uh, black-capped female, uh, she spends a lot of time in the house when the primary care staff come in, um, always inquisitive as to what we're doing. But yeah, so a nice bunch of personalities in the group. Squirrel monkeys are foragers and their enclosure is full of natural planting and foliage to attract insects. This keeps the group busy and active. It also supplements the three main fruit and vegetable feeds they're given daily, along with at least two insect feeds. Today's enthusiastic response is a clue to which is their favourite. Next time on Monkey Life. Vet Nick uses high-tech diagnostic equipment to examine health issues in some of the park's smaller primates. Look at that. So you can see there's areas of inflammation everywhere, actually. And a new puzzle motivates the Stumpies to scale new heights.